Thank you. So this is a show called Therapy Session. Despite my turtleneck, I need to make a disclaimer, I'm not a real therapist. Uh, How about her? Tonight, indulge me and pretend that I am. Tonight I want someone who's willing to talk about themselves honestly, openly, and uh, we're just going to have a session as if it's a normal therapy session. There will be a few fun things we try. If you want to talk about something serious and dramatic, totally fine. If you want to just talk about something that's a little more subtle, that's cool too. Um, but I do encourage you to be honest and to be, uh, you know, just like, uh, <coughs> pretty in. Oh, there's a lot of folks out here today. So I'm going to go ahead and say, hmm, some people here. Oh goodness! Oh my gosh! You know what? I'm actually gonna I'm gonna pick you right in the front because you were the most hesitant, and that's usually the right. Someone who's too eager to have a therapy session. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming in. And uh, could you tell me your name, please? Kayla. Kayla. So Kayla. Um, how long have you been in New York City? Eight years. Eight years? And where were you before coming? Somewhere else. <laughs> it's okay, and if you don't want to tell me, that's totally fine. But I'm is from it Seattle. From Seattle? Cool. What was that like going from Seattle to New York City? It was a six-hour flight ride. Yeah, yeah. It's a long, it's pretty long, I suppose. Long. So what brought you to New York City? School. School? And where do you go to school? Or where did you go? I went to school at NYU. NYU? And what for? For film. Film? Um, in what what uh, position were you as in? Uh, producer. Oh. Producer? Yeah. Cool. And what was that like when you first came here to be a producer? Uh, I wanted to be a writer. Okay. <laughs> so when you first came here, you wanted to be a writer? Yeah. And then you ended up being a producer? Yeah. Cool. So when did you first think that you wanted to be a writer? In high school. In high school? In like English class, sophomore year, we had a assignment uh, to do like a variation of Macbeth. Okay. And uh, for some reason, I was the only one interested in like making the video. So. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, what was what made you so interested in it? Were you interested in Shakespeare beforehand? No, I just like one of the things to do. <laughs> So did you, was it uh, you had like a position of power for the first time, or for yeah, you got it before? Cool. Yeah. Absolutely. So what did, what was um have you ever had feelings like that before that moment? No. Not really. So that's pretty interesting. So you felt enabled. Could you elaborate a bit more about what that felt like and why you felt that way? Um, probably because I was very quiet as a kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that was a opportunity to uh, share my voice. Yeah, that's that's really incredible. Cool. Thank you for sharing that. And then, so from that moment, uh, you had this this seed planted in your head that you wanted to be a writer. And have you been writing still no. today? When's the last time that you that you felt like you were actively writing? Four years ago. Four years ago. <clears throat> Do you remember the last thing you wrote? My thesis project. Your thesis project. Cool. What was that about? That was about mangoes. Mangoes? <laughs> Just about the fruit mangoes? Uh, in a metaphorical way, yes. Cool. And so what was the metaphor you were, you were trying to It think? was about immigration. Okay. What's your question? Yeah, that's, that's really sad. Right. I, I want to ask you more about that. I want to ask you a more about that, but before I do, I would like to show you, are you familiar with the term ink blots? Yes. So I would like to show you an ink blot, and then I'd like to ask you to do a free association based on the first thing that comes to your head when you see it. And then when I show you that, um, if you wouldn't mind wearing this, this is a, it's, it's a subconscious hat. <laughs> when you wear this, we can explore some of your subconscious memories. So if you wouldn't mind putting on this hat. This is the subconscious hat. It's a very high tech hat. And so I would like to show you this ink blot. And now, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you look at this? <laughs> Abortion. Abortion. <laughs> it's totally valid. I will say just because um, it's a tricky one to do scenes about. Uh, I want to ask if you guys are okay. 
I'm, I'm doing, all right, we'll go for it. So we're going to do a scene based on what we talked about and abortion. like it was only last week when you came to my office here and we had to sit down and have a talk. Yeah, yeah, last week. Um, Carrie, listen, uh, as your faculty advisor, I have to remind you, today's the deadline. You have to pick a major, okay? I know, I know. I just, um, I just, uh, I'm having a lot of trouble at home and, you know, um, my, my girlfriend and I are going through Little, little problems, and uh, I just have no uh, focus. Uh, you know? Relationship problems. Uh, happens uh, to us all, Jerry. Nothing to be worried about. Yeah. I've been going over your file, and I uh, put together a couple of options. Right. Um. There's this one. Uh, okay. Let's see, uh, Amda. What's Amda? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's 
<laughs> Where did you meet? In school. Ah. <laughs> we uh, studied abroad in China together, mm -hmm. and we both grew up on the Great Wall together. It was great. It was oh, wow. Like, kind of bonding so that's, that's really interesting. I would love to hear more about that story. <laughs> so what, oh. what, what brought you to the Great Wall of China? Well, the study abroad was in Beijing, and they brought us there because they thought we should probably see it while we were there. And what caused you to throw up? Food. Food, okay. So what kind of food? Uh, I'm not sure. There was a myriad of uh, a smorgasbord. Okay, so there was a smorgasbord. Where, where was this smorgasbord? In the mountains. Yeah. Okay, so you like went up a mountain. So it took us up a mountain in a bus, and yeah. I didn't know where we were going. It was some like paper cutting festival slash celebration of these foreign students coming to like I don't actually don't understand why they brought us. I think it was a hoax. So like there was confusing <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so at the top was a smorgasbord of food. Yes, yeah, that, that, and that, that, that you ate. ate. And then they stayed in this uh, luxury hotel, which actually was just uh, like a bed of bugs. It was very interesting. <laughs> 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 Wow. And that's, that is what, like, a, what a bond you and your roommate must have. have gone through You've a been lot. through a lot. Yes. So I want to I want to continue talking to you about more of like this travel abroad and you and your roommate. But first, I'd like to show you one more ink blot and explore another <coughs> subconscious memory. So when you look at this ink blot right here, what's the first thing that comes into your mind? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> did you say European girl. <laughs> 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 Alright, so based on what we were talking about and the word European girl, let's take a look at some memories in your subconscious. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the annual mango eating contest that takes place here at the Great Wall of China. We have many contestants this year. It's been a very interesting year. The uh, follow-ups have been uh, very intense and, uh, well, we just can't wait. Last year was quite a catastrophe. Uh, just puke everywhere. Uh, anyway, so we're going to start with the interviews. Here's your bag of mangoes, folks. And uh, just uh, really quick, uh, Gavin Joseph, you've been uh, in, the, in the rounds here about 10 years now. You've been eating mangoes. And uh, you'd like to say something to your, uh, to your audience and the millions who are watching across the world. Yeah, I've been a mango eating champ for 10 years in a row. Haven't thrown up once. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. Gavin Joseph, actually, hey, can I, can I just talk? Uh, sure. I want to say, hey, Mom, thanks for for sharing the love of mangoes with me. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, sir, hey, uh, I'm sorry. I, I don't remember your name. Uh, uh, my name is Melvin. Oh, okay. I was, uh, I was just walking by, and uh, they said they needed somebody to fill in, so I said, why not give it a shot? <laughs> Some competition. I don't think so. Meals. There's really not any competition. Look, I ate smorgasbords with <laughs> hundreds of ridiculous things. Oh, we're getting anything. called. I mean, I'll eat anything. I don't care. I'm on a group vacation. I... Okay. <laughs> we, we have one more contestant coming in. Uh, she's coming in late. Um, hello, I am from Europe. Um, bonjour. Uh, I'm your footy mango eating contest. Um, no, not her. <laughs> Uh, uh, Francine Francoise, you are a very popular girl. You won the, the contest ten years in a row. How do you feel? I feel very lucky this year. I have been doing burpees and day. Anyway, but uh, it is very, very uh, uh, exciting and uh, super cool. <laughs> Gentlemen, here we go. One, two, twat. Twat. Oh, wait, wait, is that a trick? Do you just say, hey, no, no. <laughs>
so sorry. I, I was taking some notes. I, I lost my place. I'm so sorry. But while I'm while I'm looking for my place, sorry that I'm like dodging eye contact right now. But um, so, um, well, so could I ask you if anything from this brought up any memories from your own life, any situations or thoughts? <laughs> My brother and I, my brother and I once had a chili pepper eating contest. Ooh. Okay, now that is that is pretty intense. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I I don't know what it was intense, was it for you? Oh uh, yes, my uncle was babysitting us. We were like seven and ten, and we really got into it in this restaurant, and he didn't know what to do. <laughs> so what restaurant were you in? It was a little Mexican. Yeah. Okay. So it was um, a Mexican restaurant. You ate a bunch of chilies. Who won this contest? I obviously won. You won. <laughs> okay. So do you obviously. feel like obviously? I hear a voice. Yeah. <laughs> Put it back on once we get to the next, the yeah. next session of memories. But it can be dangerous to use when not. <laughs> Sometimes it'll, it'll speak to you. It's yeah, exactly. It can be pretty intense. But anyway, um, continuing forward, uh, was this a significant contest that you were very? Or do you find that you and your brother are competitive? Yes. In what ways? Uh, actually, no. <laughs> okay. I had to think about that. No. Okay. Explain what you mean by that. I think that he kind of just lets the. Uh, so you think he let? Do you think that he, he let you win? Kind of let me win. Really? But you know, I do not want to do that. What makes you? What would give you the idea that maybe he let you win? He's the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Has he ever like exhibited behavior that seems that way before, where it's like he'll just allow you to? Yeah, things. he gives up really easily. Uh, maybe he's avoiding conflict. Yeah. Sometimes it's the easier route to let someone win. However, I mean, it seems like you have a lot of confidence in your ability to eat chili peppers. So who's to say? I mean, it's something that we can speculate about. But that's about as far as we can go. Yeah, so right now, do you say you're producing films? Yes. That was a sort of hesitant yes. Is it do you have other jobs as well or other things? Well, you've got me there. Yes. Huh? There we go. So tell me, tell me a bit more about what, what it's like um, your work right now. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, after you've gone to one of the most expensive film schools, uh, you know, you're kind of uh, indebted to it for the rest, as in like monetary. Yeah. It's like it's not like I'm indebted to you. Thank you. It's more of like I'm indebted to you. Why? <laughs> it's so expensive. Right. And yeah. um, you know, so I'm working as an assistant editor, uh, as a craft alongside working on a feature film and also working at the festival. Yeah. So it was, you know, it's a few things at the same time. Yeah. And do you feel? Yeah, of course. Do you feel like there are there are certain things that may be causing you stress during these? These people in these Besides the work itself. <laughs> yeah. Or, or anything that's giving you anxiety particularly that's bubbling up? Ants in my house. Ants. Okay. Tell me a bit about that. There are ants in my house sometimes. All right. Every time, I don't know where they come from, and my roommates leave food out, and then they and they come. Yeah. So is this the roommate that you... No, 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 not, not, not that her. one. No. Not that one. <laughs> I um, won't ask you to to, keep, to be elaborate unless you're willing to, because your roommate might be here. Oh, no, she's, no, she's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then we can totally talk oh, about yeah, the no, same there, space. There are five of us, because, you know, how else would you pay for an apartment here, right? Yeah, no, I understand. So there's five of us, and that's a lot of people, and a lot of accepting, and sometimes we get some stuff, and then the ants come, and it's like, why are the ants here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think... In a way, you're answering your own question, but <laughs> that's why you answered that. Yeah. So, do um, you feel like that's something that really is frustrating you? Yes. Yeah. So, um, where where do you live exactly? Uh, in Queens. 
in Queens. Is it like a, a proper house? It is. Yeah, because I figured in apartments it's not so much ants. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yes. In a proper house, you do see a lot of ants. Yeah, those cockroaches and other things. In Australia, it's fine to say, but not here. <laughs> so, with, um, sorry, it's a weird joke, but anyway. Uh, so, with these ants coming in, what, 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 is, uh, what are the sort of things that are causing anxiety because of these ants? Are they eating your food? How many ants are there? There are lots of ants that are in my honey. They oh. are in the bed. <laughs> in your bed. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, I'm just trying to sleep here. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's really difficult. So it seems like that's that's a big that's a big stressor for you right now. I'd actually like to show you one last pink blood, and then I'd like to have a quick talk about sort of what I'll do a little recap, and then we're going to give you a sort of diagnosis, and then we'll go from there. <laughs> so when you see this, what's the first thing? <laughs> statue in Italy, like just your own name for it. This looks like passion. Passion. <laughs> Based on what we were just talking about, passion. passion. We like this. Go. Okay, Jimmy. Jimmy, mom and dad are on vacation. They're European vacation. They rekindled their passion. They put me in charge. You in charge? Yeah, and I just got one thing to say to you. I don't care what you do, man. <laughs> whatever you want. Seriously? Jimmy. Do whatever you want, man. Really? Yeah. Can I go to the refrigerator? Sure. Go sweet, ahead. I'm I... cool, brother. You can do whatever you want. Jimmy, sweet, usually you really mean. But is there something going on that I don't know about that you're talking about? <laughs> hey, listen, you punk. Oh, oh shit. I've got a date coming over here in five minutes. You have a date? Oh, kissy wissy. Sorry. <laughs> you can do whatever you want as long as it doesn't bother me. No interrupting. Now. <laughs> sit in there and make something to eat. Make your own dinner. Have whatever you want. I don't care. Over in the other room. I wish I had to listen all the time. I'm just listening to these inner monologues every single day, you know? <laughs> I think, you know what guys want me to do? I'm gonna put ants in his food, so his girlfriend eat the ants! I love, <laughs> I love him so much, but it's like, I can't really share how much I care for him. Oh, well, we don't show emotion in my family. Oh. <laughs> Because we live in a, I really didn't know what I was saying, but he was eating the sandwich, so I didn't want him to think that I actually did. This really is it. This is the moment I've been waiting for. We're going to connect. As a you know, I don't really like him. I think I'm going to run away. He's such a poop head. <laughs> I've been such a poop head. <laughs> yeah, man, I just really, I would never hang out. This is a good what time to say to me. Sit. Yeah, man, this isn't really... No, 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 before that, what'd you say? I said, uh, I... I... I, I love... <laughs> I, love you. I love you, man. I love you, too, Jimmy. Jimmy! <laughs> I'm so sorry, man. I'm going to say I want you to... What? No! <laughs> <laughs> Final 
Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's a subconscious memory, so sometimes it's not exact, but it's usually pretty close. It's pretty good. Yeah. Obviously. Obviously. You should probably take it off. <laughs> <laughs> It'll just start talking. But anyway, Kayla, um, so you've been in New York City for eight years. Yes. Um, and you came here to NYU to work in film. You've been writing. Then it's been four years since you last wrote something. It was the Mango, the Mango on thesis about yeah. immigration and how there's the connection and also finding your own identity. And uh, right now you're you're in a lot of debt that you're still working through and that's giving you a bit of anxiety. There's a couple ants in your apartment, which is also giving you some anxiety. So I think what what I've come to realize is that you have um, a unique form of writer's block called debt ant. Debt ant. Writer's block, which is based on being in debt and having ants around. And it's, just, it's something that, that it's subtle and it's insidious and it'll start blocking your, your creative writing things, but it's something you can push through. And also, I want to let you know, you're not the only one suffering with it. I actually put together a video today yes. of other people suffering from dead ant, dead ant, dead ant, dead ant, dead ant, <laughs> writer's block. And I'd like to show it to you now. I love that. Uh, what's up? Um, I, I, um, I suffer from dead ant, dead ant, dead ant, dead ant, dead ant, writer's block. Hi. I also suffer from <laughs> dead ant, dead ant, dead ant, dead ant, dead ant, writer's block. Um, have you ever, for those who are suffering from dead ant, dead ant, dead ant, dead ant, writer's block, has this ever happened to you? <laughs> okay, today's the day. Just one word at a time. Dead ant. This happens to you. A man can't sit still. Hey, a man's got ants in his pants. <laughs> Two young Irish orphans who are here with me. <laughs> I just want to say, I mean, I've got this terrible complex where it's really hard to focus because there's so many goddamn ants everywhere. I mean, these orphans have it worse than me, I tell you. But I mean, I'm right through it. And I want to let you know that even though your life is filled with death and ants and dead ants and dead ants and ant and by death and lots of death, you can. You can! Same format, so if you like the show, tell your friends. If you didn't, keep your damn mouth shut. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.